Charles Babbage was the only child of a tyrannical London banker, a bully at home. But his money kept his son and heir financially comfortable for life. Cambridge educated in mathematics and supremely self-possessed, Charles became an iconoclastic writer and habitual inventor. In 1832, the drawing room of his London home became a showcase for demonstrations of a small section of his difference engine, a far from finished device by which he intended to revolutionize calculation by mechanizing it. At his soirees, London's intellectual society watched what you see now. As Babbage cranked its handle, this machine produced a series of polynomial calculations that were repeatable and error-free. Most astonishing, it was automatic. Any of his illustrious guests might have operated the handle as well as Charles Babbage, perhaps the geologist Charles Lyell, or Charles Darwin, or Charles Dickens. Once set, the machine seemed able to proceed to think on its own. But what was called the beautiful fragment of the machine Babbage had intended to build was all he ever finished of it. In fact, his imagination had already moved on to an even more ambitious mechanism, one that would make obsolete the abandoned machine. The analytical engine would be a general purpose calculating automaton. For most of 30 years, he would revise and improve his notional design. Only a few partial sections of it were built, this one after Babbage's death by his son. The analytical engine was an ever-evolving machine. Each breakthrough elegantly drawn up, annotated to describe mechanical motions with a coding system that Babbage claimed was his finest invention. The analytical engine may be the most intricate operating mechanism ever fully realized with paper and imagination alone. In 1846, Babbage abruptly changed course. As if determined to make good on an old obligation, he worked for two years to complete a full set of drawings for difference engine number two. It would require 8,000 parts, only a third as many as the first. He offered it to the government, but did not protest when it declined to build it, and the drawings were carefully put away. Eventually, they came from the Babbage estate to rest in the library of the Science Museum in London. More than 130 years later, in 1985, the museum's new curator of computing, Doran Swade, became convinced the institution could build difference engine number two. After all, with the intact drawings, it seemed feasible and within financial reach. It took 17 years and drama to rival Babbage's so long ago. And it works, just as Babbage designed it. Every turn of the engine's driving handle is carried through gears, cams, rods, levers, and springs to release and arrest precisely aligned number wheels. A helical arrangement of steel fingers continually pulls the register towers to find and perform the carrying of tens in its continuing sweep upward. It is mesmerizing. The intricate printing section can be programmed for one, two, or three column output, for two font sizes at once, for variable margins and column gaps, even word wrap where necessary. It prints hard copy on paper and simultaneously impresses the same output into a tray of plaster to produce a stereotype, a mold for casting a full page printing plate. When a tray is full, the printer pauses the entire machine. In the spring of 2008, a clone of DE2 commissioned by Nathan Meervold was completed at the Science Museum and shipped to California. At the Computer History Museum, it would charm new thousands of discerning eyes. Today, the crotchety proud genius, who never managed to prove it during his lifetime, has a fair claim to honor as a pioneer in the history of intelligent machines. 
just as his parlor guests in 1832 suggested. His difference engine continues to inspire the admiration of his intellectual heirs, a celebrated and unique icon to chroniclers of computing. Charles Babbage, remember, never saw it, except in his stubborn, prescient dreams.